Shalom, family. Most high in Christ. Bless. I'm Captain Enoch. I'm also Amos. And this is another 15 minutes with the captain. And we're going to do monitoring your child. All right? Monitor your child. First, we're going to start off with the article. Because one big thing that we have to realize, Israel, is that YouTube shouldn't be raising your child. Right? Uh, social media shouldn't be raising your child and showing your child what's right and what's wrong. You already have a guideline on what's right and what's wrong in the Bible. All right, so we're going to go through that and kind of just touch on some things that we can implement with us having children, whether it's a young child or an older child. All right, uh, let's start with this article first. It's called it's from PewResearch.org. Right here, we're going to read this paragraph. YouTube has emerged as a key platform for both younger and older kids. Fully 89% of parents of a child aged 5 to 11 say their child watches videos on YouTube. Wait, wait, it says. 89% of parents of a child ages 5 to 11 say that their child is on YouTube. Think about that. It says 89%. So chances are your child is on YouTube. The thing is, are you monitoring what they're watching? Because a lot of the times parents will say, hey, I know what my child is educational video. Right. It's these type of videos. You don't know. If you're not monitoring, you have no idea what your child could be watching. It could slip into, uh, you know, they were watching uh, something about numbers or ABCs. Next thing you know, they're showing them Christmas for the younger children. Next thing you know, it's talking about birthdays. All these shows, all these little, little things that we see on YouTube, Netflix, and all these other things, all of them teach about birthdays, Christmas, Easter, all that other, Halloween. They teach about those things. So if 89% of our children are on YouTube, they're exposed to things that they shouldn't be at some point. That's why it's important to monitor it. Let's go back to the audit. As do 81% of those who have a child aged 3 to 4. So 81% for your child being 3 to 4. And 57% of those of a child ages 2 or younger. Right. So think about it. If you're just leaving your child in front of the, the iPad or the whatever at the age of 2, they're not going to switch nothing. They're just going to watch whatever comes up. You have to monitor that thing, all right? Keep reading on the article. And while majorities of parents whose child uses YouTube credit the platform for entertaining and educating their children. Because it is things on there that's educational, read. A majority of these parents are concerned about their child being exposed to inappropriate content on the video sharing site. For instance, a lot of the times... When you're, um, when, let's say your child is watching whatever, right? Akili. Uh, uh, Akili, uh, right. Something about spelling or something like that. As they're watching that video, there's going to be an ad eventually. They say that if you have it on, you know, children's programs, it's going to be child-proof advertisement. Let's say that that's true. But let's say it's also around Christmas time. What you think is going to be played on that commercial? You're gonna have to monitor that because your child might not hit, might not know how to hit the skip button, or might just be subject to just whatever that is on there. So you gotta monitor that and make sure. Hey, let me let me make sure I'm uh, uh, watching and 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 putting something on that I know is gonna benefit them. You understand? You gotta really pay attention because Esau's goal is to put those things of the world into your child's mind while we're fighting to take it away from, take the the world away from them. It's a big fight, but you got to be paying attention. Now, we could drop that article. I want you to go to Deuteronomy 6, and we're going to start at verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 6, we're going to start at verse 1. Because you got to, we already have a guideline on what and how we should teach our children. Go ahead. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 1. Read. Now, these are the commandments, uh -huh. the statutes, and the judgments, which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, uh -huh. that ye might do them in the land whether you go to possess it. That you might do the commandments, right? Do the things that where you go in the land where you go to possess it. Read verse 2. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God uh -huh. to keep all his statutes. To do what? Keep all his statutes uh -huh. and his commandments, uh -huh. which I command thee, thou and thy son. Thou and thy what? Thy son uh -huh. and thy son's son. It's a generational thing, right? Read. All the days of thy life. All the days of thy life, read. And that thy days may be prolonged. Now jump to verse 7. Verse 7. Read. And thou shalt teach them diligently. So you're going to teach those commandments diligently. Unto thy children. To who? 
thy children. To your children. I'm going to tell you this. Most of the time on YouTube and on Netflix, they're not teaching the commandments at all. They might be teaching ABCs. They might be teaching numbers. But most of the time, they're not teaching the commandments. God says we got to teach our children that diligently. Read. And shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. So even when you're in a house chilling, that's not always the time to just throw your children the iPad or the computer or the phone where they can just watch stuff on YouTube. You have to teach them those commandments and those laws. Read. And when thou walkest by the way, uh -huh. and when thou liest down, uh -huh. and when thou risest up. So that means you're constantly teaching your kids about the commandments. Why would that be written there? Because the Lord already knows, especially for this time, when there's distractions everywhere, this is what you need to be focused on to, your, to teach your children. Give me Psalms chapter 78, verse 5. The book of Psalms chapter 78 and verse 5. We got a big task, Israel, in getting our children right. Because all praises, your child is keeping the commandments, but the world is fighting to try to de de uh, defile your child. So you got to take an active step in monitoring everything that that child does. You have to. It's not like in the world where you be like, hey, whatever. Most of you uh, uh, um, were raised or you raised your children in the world to be whoremongers, to be disrespectful, to celebrate birthdays, to celebrate Christmas, idolaters. You was teaching them everything. Now when you come into this truth, you got to fight that. You got to fight against all those years of, of sin and, and corruption that we've been subjugated to. All right? Read that. Psalms chapter 78, verse 5. Psalms chapter 78, verse 5. Read. For he established a testimony in Jacob uh -huh. and appointed a law. A what? A law uh -huh. in Israel. Read. Which he commanded our fathers uh -huh. that they should make them known to their children. Make them known to who? To their children. To your children. Make the laws of God known. Not YouTube, not Netflix, but the laws of God. Read. That the generation to come. That the generation to come. Might know them. Might know them. E Read. Even the children which should be born. Uh -huh. Who should ar arise and declare them to their children. You see, the Lord is already telling you what to teach them and how to make sure it's a generational thing. All right? Read. That they might set their hope in God. No, no. Set their hope in you too. Set their hope in God. But I like a Keely and a B or whatever it is. That they might set their hope in God. Set their hope in the most high. Read. And not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. That's the only way they're going to do it. Is if you're teaching them constantly. If you're reminding them constantly. If you're allowing the, the things of the world to teach them more than you teaching them the commandments, you might have a problem on your hands. Not might. You're going to have a problem on your hands. Watch this. Read uh, Proverbs 29. We're going to read verse 15. Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 15. It's very important, Israel. Don't, uh, let's not neglect our children, all right? Uh, Proverbs 29, 15. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 15. Great. The rod and reproof give wisdom. So we know correction is going to help our children. Watch this, though. But a child left to himself. But a child what? Left to himself. Left to himself. Bring of his mother to shame. He's going to bring shame. He's going to bring shame. Why? You leave them to yourself. You're not monitoring what they're doing. They're going to get into all sorts of evil and mischief. Understand that. Jump to verse uh, 17. Verse 17. Read. Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. So correct them. Be in their lives. Monitor your child, and they're going to give you rest. Read. Yea, he shall give the light unto thy soul. Read. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But think about that in the context of your child. If you don't give them a vision, if you don't give them guidance, they are going to fail. They're going to fail. YouTube is going to make your child fail. All those things are going to make your children fail if you not stand diligent in the commandments. I am not saying you can't have your child watch YouTube or watch. I'm not saying you can't do it at all. It's going to say use this word as not abusing it. So I'm not saying you, you're wrong for allowing your child to watch learning material on, on the internet. What I'm saying is don't allow that to raise your child mm -hmm. to the point where all they're doing is watching the iPad, to the point where they're not watching the educational things no more because it'll start with educational and if you're not careful, it could turn to something very worse. As we just seen, 89% of children, uh, of parents of children 5 through 11 allow their kids to watch the internet, uh, the YouTube and all those different things. So you got to be very mindful of that, all right? Uh, get me, uh, did you read verse 18? No, sir. Read it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where there is no vision, the people perish. 
but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Happy is he. All right? Now, give me Proverbs 22, verse 15. Because you might ask, why am I monitoring my child? Why do we got to keep such a close watch? Watch what the Lord says. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 15. Read. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. Wait a second. Wait a second. Read that again. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. So foolishness, nonsense, is bound in the mind of a child. They're going to be curious in the foolishness. They're going to want to know, why can't I watch this? What's wrong with Christmas? What's wrong? Those are the things that's going to be moving up in their mind. So you're going to have to monitor what they're doing. Because the Bible says what? Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. Read. But the rod of correction. But what? The rod of correction. You understand that? But the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. And it's funny that Esau tried to tell you not to spank your children. They tell you don't do it. No, that's abusive. God says you need to do it to save their life. Watch this. Give me Sirach 17, 16. Watch this. The book of Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus, chapter 17, verse 16. Sirach, chapter 17, verse 16. Read. Every man from his youth is giving to evil. Wait a second. Read that again. Sirach, chapter 17, verse 16. Uh -huh. Every man from his youth is giving to evil. Uh -huh. Neither could they make to themselves fleshly hearts or stony. Or stony, meaning... What? It says we are given to evil from our youth, from a young age. We're attacked by evil on all sides. I'm telling you, one thing you're watching, you're monitoring, I'm using young children for now. You're, you're monitoring that young child on that, on that internet platform. Everything's going fine. Next thing you know, it might be an ad of a, a, a homosexual on there. Because even now with kids' programs, they're promoting homosexuality. The cartoons got. I don't think. Can you watch any? Have I? Have y'all seen any shows where there wasn't a homosexual in it? The past five years. Now, that's what I'm saying. So you got a big fight. You got a big fight. If foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, you got to monitor it so they don't be curious in that wickedness. You got to really pay attention. You got to monitor what they're doing. Give me second back to be seven. Because a lot of the times, what they do, they don't want to uh, spend the time to do it. Um, have, especially for the mothers, you know, those that stay at home, even if you have a job, you have to be willing to uh, put up with the hardships of teaching your child. 2 Maccabees 7, verse 24. 2 Maccabees chapter 7, verse 24. Watch this. Now, Antiochus, thinking himself despised and suspecting it to be a reproachful speech, uh -huh. was the youngest was yet alive, uh -huh. did not only exhort him by words, but also assured him with oaths that he would make him both a rich and a happy man. The mother has seven children, right? Watch this, she has seven sons. So Antiochus was killing her children. She, he was killing her children because they wouldn't obey his command and break the Lord's commandments and follow what he, what he wants them to do. She refused and her kids did as well. But watch this, start at verse 24 again. Now Antiochus thinking himself despised and suspecting it to be a reproachful speech, Whilst well, the youngest was yet alive, did not only exhort him by words, but also assured him with oaths that he would make him both a rich and a happy man if he would turn from the laws of his father. So if he break the commandments, right? And that also he would take him for his friend and trust him with affairs. How wicked is Esau? I'm going to give you everything if you turn your back on God. God already gave us everything, demon. All we got to do is wait on it. <laughs> Read. But when the young man would in no case hearken unto him, All praises, the really. king called his mother, called that, boy, that boy's mother, and exhorted her that she would counsel the young man to save his life. Now, she had an opportunity here, right? She did. Here, here's, the, here's her opportunity, quote unquote opportunity. She could give the iPad to the ch children, just let them deal with it, let the world take them, and they could get the laws, right? I'm just using it as, 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 as an example. Or she could just keep teaching the commandment like the Bible said. Let's see what she said. And when he had exhorted her with many words, she promised him that she would counsel her son. Mm -hmm. But she bowed herself towards him, laughing, the cruel tyrant to scorn. You see that? She started laughing this demon to scorn. Read. Spake in her country language on this matter. Spoke in Hebrew, right? Read. Oh, my son, have pity upon me that bear thee nine months in my womb, uh -huh. and gave thee suck three years, uh -huh. and nourished thee, and brought thee up unto this age, uh -huh. and endured 
the troubles of education. That's the part, part I wanted. You want to read the rest? Go ahead. This is the Listen, she was so brave for her children. Her children were too. They were all killed because they wouldn't conform to this king. Right. They said, I'm going to follow the Lord. She decided to teach her children as the Lord said. And they actually stood up and were brought up and were courageous in the laws of God. She didn't allow them to be uh, uh, overtaken by the world. She didn't allow them to be subdued or, or swayed by the things of the world. She actually taught them. So that's why I went there because right there at the bottom it says, and she endured the troubles of education. It's not going to be easy, but giving them that iPad is, giving them that TV, that's very simple, isn't it? But actually teaching them is going to be a tough thing, but we have to endure it. Why? Because their lives are on the line. They might not be getting put to death like King and Tychus was doing, but guess what? Spiritually, they are being attacked and being uh, 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 chased after to be killed. She endured those troubles. Give me Sirach 30. We have to do the same thing. She endured, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to teach our children. As well. Start at verse 1. Sirach chapter 30, verse 1. Read. He that loveth his son calls to him all. To feel the rock, Read. that he may have joy of him in the end. Read. He that chastises his son shall have joy in him and shall rejoice of him among his acquaintances. Uh -huh. He that teaches his son grieveth the enemy. He that teaches his son to what? Grieveth the enemy. It grieves the enemy when you're monitoring your child. When you're watching what they're doing and making sure that they're okay. It hurt. Listen, Esau can't stand that thing. Why? Because you're bringing back your nation. Right. They thought they were so successful. Remember the Willie Lynch letter? Yes, we got them, unless a phenomenon occurs. Well, guess what? We're in the phenomenon. We are the phenomenon. That's right. Watch this. Read. Verse 3 again. Verse 3. He that teaches his son grieveth the enemy. Uh -huh. And before his friends, he shall rejoice of him. Read. Though his father died. Uh -huh. Yet he is as though he were not dead. Why? Because they monitor their child. Now your child is walking the same way you did. Read. For he hath left one behind him that is like himself. Look at verse 7. Six. Verse 6. Uh -huh. He left behind him an avenger against his enemies, and one that shall requite kindness to his friends. Watch this. He, uh, uh, jump to verse 9. Verse 9. Conquer thy child. So play with your child. And he shall make thee afraid. You see that? You're playing games. You're not monitoring what they're doing. You're not watching them. They're going to make you afraid. Read. Play with him, uh -huh. and he will bring thee to heaviness. He will bring you to sorrow, to sadness. Read. Laugh not with him, uh -huh. lest thou have sorrow with him, uh -huh. and lest thou gnash thy teeth, thy teeth in the end. Read. Give him no liberty. Wait a second. Read that part again. Give him no liberty. Give him no freedom. In his youth. In their youth. Don't just give them something. Turn your back. They don't get no freedom. There is no, you do what you want to do as a child. It's in, no, it's not. I, listen, y'all know better. Y'all wasn't raised like that, so we're not going to do that in Israel. We, gotta, we actually have the Bible, which is the guideline for us, to show us what we got to do. We're not going to allow, we're not going to give our children no liberty. To hell with what Esau tell you. I'm going to go with what God said. Read that verse again. Give him no liberty in his youth, read. and wink not at his follies. Oh, wink at their follies, read. Bow down his neck while he's young, uh -huh. and beat him on the sides while he's a child. So he's telling you where to spank him. Read. Lest he wax stubborn and be disobedient unto thee, uh -huh. and so bring sorrow to thy heart. You see that? Now watch this. We're going to play that last video. I'm going to show you something. This, you got to understand. This is, of course, we went through the scriptures first to show you what God says on why you should monitor them. But watch what's out there on the internet for you older, you know, teenage children. Watch this. Let's play this video. We're going to play it for three minutes and I think 16 seconds. I never thought I would be chasing child predators. It was two years ago when our team intercepted conversations between a 12-year-old girl and a 40-year-old pedophile. He wasn't just talking to her. He was abusing her, coercing her, collecting images and videos, and no one in her life, her parents, sixth grade teacher, or friends, knew what was happening. I have a sixth grader of my own. I have three kids, actually, but you don't have to be a parent to be devastated by this. I work for a tech company that uses artificial intelligence to detect issues like grooming and sexual predation, and this is something we see constantly. 
these abuses are occurring quietly and mostly go unreported, and we want parents to know exactly what we know about what happens online. So we made a plan. A man has been arrested for allegedly raping a 15-year-old that he met over Snapchat. Instagram has become the number one social TikTok media site. TikTok is at the top of the exactly. free download. We've also seen firsthand the predatory symbiotic relationship that exists pause that, pause between that. Instagram and Snapchat. Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, all, TikTok. Those are all the things that our children, especially these teenagers, are into today. Which is showing you all the more reason why you need to be monitoring them. Because why? Esau and these pedophiles, it ain't just Esau that's pedophiles, Jake, pedophiles. All these nations are pedophiles. There's pedophiles in all nations. And they're looking for young uh, teenage girls. So you need to do your job. Watch this. Go back to the video. We would create a fictitious 15-year-old girl, complete with a believable social media identity, put her online, and document how long it would take for a predator to approach her. But creating a person out of thin air is complicated. We needed photos, but we knew we couldn't use an actual teenager. It would have to be someone on our team. I'm 37, but our graphic designers assured me that with the wonders of photo manipulation, they could magically make me look over two decades younger. We bought clothes and accessories, studied body language and facial expressions. Pause, 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 pause. So if they can make her 20 years younger, Think about how our, if we're not careful, how our daughters are presenting themselves on social media. They can make themselves look older. That's why we have to monitor it so we don't run into these situations. Go back. I mean, I mean, play the video uh, again. Play it. Likely covered and edited signs of aging, wrinkles, weight shifts, and stretch marks. Meanwhile, we coordinated with federal, state, and local law enforcement. Then we built a story around her. A history, a family, a social circle. Livy was born in 2004 and is a sophomore who recently moved to Indiana. We created multiple online accounts for Livy, prominently displayed her age, and posted typical teen content. We even created virtual friends for Livy who would comment on her posts. With everything in place, we would launch the project, give it a few months, and see if anyone would buy it. Watch so this. we hit the button and Livy went live. Within the first hour of posting on Libby's accounts, seven adult men contacted her. By the end of nine days, that number was 92. Stop the that. Conversation In nine days, it was 92 damn pedophiles. Y'all can watch that video on your own to finish out, but I'm just showing you how important it is to monitor what your children are doing, whether they be young babies and young children toddlers and whatever, or teenagers. Monitor it. Monitor it. Why? Because God already told you to. Let's follow what the Bible says, Is right? With that, we're going to say shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark We on Paul's mission We out on the road Purple and gold From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how we're men repented at heart the scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth. 